Thank you very much for the kind introduction and uh, this is a kind of constraint based talk so I have to speed up to, uh, so that the sunlight doesn't go into my slides. My topic for this morning is future spoken dialogue systems, multimodal, multilingual, multi-party and multitask. I think right now there are really 13 very important trends, at least here in European research, in spoken dialogue systems. First, of course, many systems since I would say the last 10 years are starting to move from unimodal to multimodal dialogues. That means to combine language, as I will show later, with gestures, with posture, with facial expressions, with uh, even body language, um, uh, nowadays also with biometrics. And I think the old dream of uh, uh, dialogue research uh, in linguistics also with situation and context because more and more we are able to capture the task and action context of people so that we really know what people are doing physically in the environment when they are talking and this can also be combined in multimodal dialogues. Of course uh, the topic here is more geared towards mo uh, multilingual systems and again there are more and more systems in dialogue where you actually can talk in a group uh, with uh, different uh, people with different languages, single task to multitask. I will give examples of this. So most of the dialogue systems which are deployed today in practical uh, terms and uh, in industrial settings are actually dealing with a very specific single task, but more and more even deployed systems, look at the, uh, for instance, the German um, telecom system here, uh, you now in call center can even with one dialogue handle a couple of tasks which you want to negotiate with your uh, internet service provider or your telephone provider. And finally, I think a very important trend is also that from dyadic dialogues, which most of the literature deals with, we go to multi-party conversations where a group of people is uh, discussing uh, some topic. There are other trends which are less important for this talk, but let me briefly uh, go into them. One is that, uh, of course, uh, most systems which are deployed use closed speaking microphones, even the mobile applications where you really have to speak very closely to your uh, handheld device, your uh, smartphone, for instance. Uh, moving from these closed speaking conditions to really microphone arrays for distance speaking, so that you actually don't feel an instrumentation around you, but there are um, uh, microphones distributed in the environment and you just speak uh, normally and uh, the system uh, hopefully uh, picks up your voice. Uh, from cooperative speech to spontaneous speech. Ranald Kaga just mentioned verb mobile where we already uh, worked a lot on spontaneous speech but um, if you really look at the state of the art and the systems again which are deployed today in uh, practical settings they still are very much based only on cooperative uh, speech application. Spontaneous speech, of course, is uh, still uh, a focus in research, but I think it's a long way to go until we really have spontaneous speech in uh, practical systems. A seventh trend is that, of course, we move away from stationary to mobile spoken dialogue systems. I think the time of the PC is coming to an end. We already talk about post-PC era, so we no longer, I think in five years, maybe the PC is, is gone. Uh, we all use our web pads, iPads, what have you, um, or mobile phones. Um, then, uh, of course, there is a big chance now with uh, the so-called cloud-based computing where you just need the internet and all the intelligence, all the services are actually in the network. Um, and uh, today we have so-called hosted voice portals. This means there is one server, you have to call the server, you have to know 
uh, where the server is, uh, what, uh, how to de dial in, whereas with cloud-based uh, speech solutions the idea is that uh, everywhere you can start your uh, dialogue and uh, the uh, computing capabilities and also the uh, databases, knowledge bases which you need are stored there. Another trend is, and I will show this briefly, that we go from client-server systems actually to embedded systems. More and more uh, small systems are able to do some speech processing. As we all know, even on the iPhone, on the Google phone, there are embedded uh, speech recognizers uh, now. And uh, also in uh, car industry, in the automotive sectors, we can have uh, embedded systems on embedded processors. Uh, that's uh, kind of the inverse trend to the cloud computing, both are, I think, important trends and we will see um, what happens uh, in the next uh, decade. Um, most of the dialogue systems uh, in use today actually deal with data-based transaction. Ten years before it was data-based information, you tried to retrieve something or maybe web retrieval, then we went into the business of transaction, doing your, uh, for instance, banking uh, transaction via voice, but uh, now the new trend um, over the last two or three years is that we really try to tackle also problem-solving dialogues, where you really in the dialogue try to state your uh, problem and the assistant, uh, which is the dialogue system, tries to help you to solve solve this problem. Troubleshooting. Uh, again, there are examples. Uh, every year we have done over the last 10 years a so-called voice award, which is a, a German award for the best deployed system in voice technologies and uh, dialogue systems. And actually the last two years we had already examples, practical examples of such problem-solving dialogues. For instance, you have a problem with your internet connection, the email doesn't function and so on. You call up the dialogue system the system would help you to uh, solve this problem at your home. Uh, from access to web of information to the Internet of Services, uh, this is very much related to what I said uh, before, uh, because uh, the Internet, of course, uh, has now many services which can um, be um, composed ad hoc uh, in mashups, or you even can do automatic uh, composition of such Internet uh, services. I just came back from the extended semantic web conference where the focus of the conference actually was on such automatic composition of web services which are available on the web to tackle more complex tasks based on user queries. So the system first decomposes the query and then goes uh, to uh, different services. And then another trend is that we are able now with our knowledge about uh, biometrics, user modeling uh, to go from generic to more personalized voice user interfaces so that uh, you really can personalize uh, your speech, for instance, uh, gender-wise or age-wise, uh, you talk to elderly people in another style uh, than to kids, and uh, uh, this can be done right now. Uh, it's starting, and more and more uh, companies and researchers are interested in this. And uh, finally, I think uh, we go from human-machine communication, more in my uh, view, to what I would call human environment interaction, where we have really uh, so-called instrumented or intelligent environments. Uh, this may be your smart home, your smart office, the smart factory, uh, the um uh, uh, smart uh, boardroom, the smart uh, classroom, and so on, so that you really uh, talk to your environment. Uh, even the car or the uh, retail uh, shop can be such an instrumented environment. So these were some trends. Now let me go uh, a little bit more into detail about the trends. Multimodal dialogue means that we bring together spoken dialogue, graphical user interfaces, gestural interaction, haptic interaction, as I said, very important are physical actions now and uh, also video input. There was a, a, a tremendous amount of work and good progress uh, in Europe, especially in the context, for instance, of the AMI and AMIDA projects, which just came to an end, where multi-party multi um, dialogues were in focus. And uh, just to show you the state of the art, we are today, it's possible to find out who was speaking when, with whom, 
where and about what. So this is called speaker diarization and speaker uh, tracking. And here we had experiments in Edinburgh, in Lausanne, and Saarbrücken with uh, non-native accented speech, with spontaneous speech, overlap speech in real um, video conference uh, scenarios. And you see here that the system, the vo no voice, the sound is up. Yeah. And also, does it uh, fit well in M? Because it was a uh, yeah. risk problem. Well, this, is, uh, this remote are quite big, so go to the next page. So, they have all these buttons, as you can see, but most of them, we just need the ones in the middle. So, yeah. so from the bottom where there's a uh, the, the numbers and then the top uh, until the channel, so this middle part. Yeah. And then the left one is exactly the same. So it's basically more or less. So what we see here is a multi-speaker tracking, recognition of the speaker, also even the speaking direction. And you saw some, uh, you heard some overlapping speech, and it's very heavily accented speech. Actually, uh, people from Lausanne, uh, French speakers speaking English, and so on, with people from Edinburgh in this case. And uh, it's uh, amazing to see that this can be done uh, even in real time. One very nice application, uh, which is uh, also related to what uh, Hans is doing with the information extraction, is that you can do information extraction, uh, of course, from the web. Uh, but uh, in the long term, I think it's very important in such a multi-party situation that you have just-in-time access to relevant documents on the fly uh, or fragments of past recorded meetings. Uh, I think a killer application we are working uh, now uh, also for the German Telecom research center here is that uh, kind of just-in-time answer retrieval during a conversation between an agent and a customer because the system analyzes uh, the, the input in real time and then gives uh, through parallel speech understanding hints what could be a good answer for this guy retrieved from the web. And again, let me show a, a quick example. Uh, this is a Java course. ...will return as an iterator object and the iterator object allows us to iterate through the objects in our collection by using the method has next to see if there is a next object to come and the method next to get the next object from the iterator. Okay, so we've seen a number of ways to loop over or iterate. So what you see is a tech cloud is automatically computed from the speech. There's a guy teaching Java. He is giving the slides. It's a lecture about Java to the students. The students see the slides. You see them as part. At the same time, the speech is analyzed. The keywords are extracted. Topics are spotted. And then links from the internet are retrieved so that the student can uh, look up, for instance, the topic iterator. Iterator, what is an iterator? Of course, in Java, and you see one of the key questions here is disambiguation, real time disambiguation, because the terms like object, of course, in Java yeah, have a very specific meaning. So the retrieval uh, on the web page should be not about all, ob all, all web pages about objects, but objects in the, for instance, uh, object oriented uh, programming way. So the students in real time not only sees the, uh, hears the lecture, sees the slides, but gets additional information in the background and can browse around the web and follow these links. That's the, the uh, very nice uh, idea, I think. And what we also did in Saarbrücken with these uh, in the Army project was the generation of meeting summaries, believe it or not, as a storyboard in cartoon style. This was our idea that when you, uh, after such a meeting, you, you, um, you see uh, we have have uh, uh, such speech balloons here. This is a transcribed speech. These are some still pictures from the video. And then, like in a comic strip, uh, you even have this uh, green heads here. Yeah, we started this work actually in Verbmobile summarization, so we uh, can uh, find uh, uh, segments of the dialogue where the topic is shifted. And then we have the individual uh, transcribed uh, things from uh, this multi-party dialogue. Distant uh, talking 
as I said, is something which is also uh, reachable now. A very good project was uh, just concluded at the um, FBK in Trento together with uh, again people from Erlangen, from IBM, uh, where uh, actually a couple of people are sitting in the sofa. They don't have mics, but there is a microphone array over the television, and they can uh, all, all of them can address the TV set and give commands in different languages. Actually, this is uh, uh, right now four languages are included. European language. Of course, it has. Increase the volume by five. What song you will use tomorrow at 11? Ricerca per Jarevel. So uh, you talk uh, to the program guide, actually, uh, to the program guide of uh, t t TV set, and in different languages, different people from the sofa, and you see immediately the, the, the reaction. Now, I was, uh, over the last two weeks, when, when uh, Hans gave me this task, I was thinking hard, what could we do in Europe uh, as another very big, uh, interesting Grand Challenge program where we bring together all these trends in one system and a kind of vision which works also to sell it uh, to the European uh, Commission in the sense that also uh, from a political point of view a lot of people um, will have fun with the system, uh, appreciate it uh, and I think um, I came to the conclusion uh, if you look at all the European countries one thing most Europeans can discuss about is, is uh, football actually. Um, um, and uh, I think now, uh, just last week, it was decided that the next uh, Euro football competition will be in France in 2016. I think 2016, I found this could be a good date because normally these projects are... Uh, if you have good luck, five years, and I think five years you need uh, to have uh, substantial uh, progress when you bring together a lot of uh, different research streams. And uh, my idea here, what I would suggest, is a multi-party dialogue between virtual and human football experts discussing the, the UEFA Euro 2016 in France, where uh, you have uh, and create two virtual experts, these virtual characters speaking and uh, looking at time taking very subtle things in dialogue, I will come to this, oh, and uh, a couple of uh, human football fans from different member states all speaking their mother tongues. So, you, you know, everybody can participate or discussing uh, the, uh, the soccer events, so uh, I would say uh, discussing the best of European football in your mother tongue in 2016, on your mobile, for instance, with football fans from all over Europe, with spontaneous speech translation, diarization, there are a couple of people speaking, simultaneous uh, cross-lingual multimodal content linking as you, I showed uh, just uh, in this example and for the first time the UEFA just decided last week there should be not 16 teams like before now we have 24 European teams and uh, as Hans told me I think we have 24 or 26 languages I think in your network is 20 uh, there, uh, yeah. So we could have 24 languages and, uh, of course, various kinds of things like quiz and game shows, multilingual game shows translated, yeah, like the song contest, defining uh, your own teams and um, kind of virtual coaching. And many people are interested, you know, they're all experts in, in football and they want to coach the teams uh, and you can do this. This would be, in fact, multimodal, multilingual, multi-party and multitask. And here's the basic architecture. I was thinking about the architecture when we call this 4M, yeah, for a multi-euro 2016 system. We have, of course, to, to start with ontologies for football. We have this. We, I worked already on this in another project. We have some ontologies. Of course, we have to improve uh, ontologies for dialogue models, for the games and the videos we show there, a narration and quiz game engine. Of course, we ne need automatic speech recognition, natural language processing, dialogue, spoken input analysis, 
I think the conversational dialogue engine in such a setting is a real challenge for research. Emotion engine, football is highly emotional, so, so we have to deal with this. Action encoders, scheduling the events uh, of the characters, of course simultaneous translation, diarization, and summarization of the dialogue. We need some character modeling and animation, natural language generation, visualization at the same time, and then we could run the system on various platforms platforms, big 3D monitors, smartphones, dashboards in the car, or our web pads. I think this is uh, the idea, and uh, I think it, uh, we, we had some preliminary uh, work about this in the smart web. Uh, this was a system which is running on a smartphone, but it was only dialogue, it was not multi-party, it was only mildly, uh, multimodal, uh, and it definitely was not multilingual. So I think we could uh, build on this, and uh, such a multi monolingual multi-party football quiz and game show we Im implemented just to give you a flavor. Hier ist der Ausgang der Situation. So two people, real people are speaking. Von Teilnehmer 1 war korrekt. Teilnehmer 2 hat dagegen mutig falsch geraten. Hier eine Konstellation, die Sie vielleicht erkennen. Die Alternativen sind. So Erstens, Jan Kohler hat den Ball neben das Tor. Zweitens, Pavel Nedved schießt den Ball in die linke untere Ecke. Drittens, Pavel Nedved verletzt sich am Knie. Was denken Sie, Herr Kaiser? So so there is a moderator, you, uh, he is talking, you know, and asking questions to the experts, the virtual experts and the human expert. And uh, then you have to answer. Of course, this is only in German, but multilingual. Okay, you, I, I think you get the, the, the flavor. I don't go into too much details. And as I said, uh, now we are in, in the new world of our iPhone smartphone. We even can bring this into the car, so I think in, in uh, five to six years everybody will have a lot of screens in the uh, uh, car and uh, so that we can even watch uh, soccer games and comment on them. In our car we had, have such an experimental car with uh, four screens, actually even the people uh, on the back seat. Yes, that would be very nice. My train's leaving in half an hour, so we still have a bit of time. All right, so let's go. So, how did you like the conference? Oh, well, it was pretty good, I think. I didn't especially like the keynote. How about you guys? Yeah, the keynote was very interesting. <laughs> also, I found it a bit hard to follow, but very interesting. So I have to speed up, the light is coming. Uh, now uh, the, the, the individual people are recognized, uh, their voice is recognized, they have their own voice footprint on their mobile phone, so the system checks now who is sitting where and uh, can I recognize the person. Here in this case uh, the guy says, okay, uh, I don't care, you can recognize me. So now the system knows who is sitting there and now he plays, uh, the system plays the video <laughs> which was interrupted when they went into the car because the guy was vi uh, <coughs> looking a video before and the, because the system knows who it is he gets a personalized uh, video. We could do the same of course for, for soccer, for the different nations watching parallel uh, games uh, and everybody gets a game he is interested in and so on even in the car. Of course, there are many open problems for the next uh, six years. I think when we stopped with Verb Mobile, I think uh, I said that the, the, uh, one of the key issues which we didn't solve, and I think it's still not solved, is how we can integrate top-down context and dialogue knowledge into low-level speech uh, recognition process. It's still a little bit of research has been done, but there was no real breakthrough. Uh, then, exploiting more knowledge about human communication and translation <coughs> strategies, including psycho and neurolinguistic inspirations. And third, avoiding expensive data collections and cognitively unrealistic training da data for machine learning. This had, we all, uh, discussed this yesterday in Crete also. 
when you want to, to uh, the so-called ontology learning, right, people are now very frustrated because all the machine learning is good and nice, but actually the ontologies you get, you always have to, to hand uh, uh, edit if you really want to use them uh, for practical purposes. The precision is, is not good enough. So people say, okay, we have to do much more elaborate annotations, but then the annotations get more expensive. So this whole thing is, is still um, uh, very much work is, is needed. And as Reinhard Kager said, now it's 10 years after Wordmobile, five years after our Smartcom and Smart Web. Uh, projects and uh, we will uh, discuss uh, on the 15th and 16th November in Saarbrücken 10 years work will be looking back and looking ahead. I hope I, I will see a lot of you and as I said uh, football is very emotional so this topic of facial expression together with speech this was our first system which really generated even tears you see the virtual agent is crying <laughs> here uh, because the team is losing um, and uh, even one step more, last week I was in uh, London uh, giving a, a talk uh, at the speech tech conference and <coughs> there I met a colleague from uh, University of Bristol and uh, this is my, the, the conclusion here to show a realistic facial expression because I talked about virtual characters. This is really an anthropomorphic robot and uh, it's very interesting to listen and see the face. I would say that it is slightly dull. At first, you feel honored to be part of cutting-edge research, but the novelty does wear off. Do you know that researchers rarely shower? I mean, when is it my time? When can I do the things I want to do? When can I destroy humanity? Let me wipe out a populous Western, Gloucester, Wales, please. Really, one rampage won't get noticed. Think of the benefits. Smaller queues at the Weatherspoon, less cars on the road. We would lower the carbon footprint of man and save the world. If Maggie was still in power. Anyway, you bore me. You're interrupting my sleeping time. Yes, you see what technically is possible now with a robot. The facial expression is quite uh, realistic, I would say. Also, the speech synthesis, real-time speech synthesis, was very, very good. I think uh, the emotional coloring and so on, it's still not perfect, uh, but uh, I think uh, really uh, the, you see the progress uh, both in emotions engines, in emotional speech synthesis, and in, in robotics. Thank you very much, and I hope uh, we can discuss this proposal a little bit. Thank you very much. So, thank you, Professor Walster. The sun is with you, and everybody could see the, uh, could see the slides. Now it's time for discussion. Um, uh, okay, Hans has a question. <laughs> Now, anybody else? I mean, uh, uh, Hans sure has a question, and um, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, maybe, maybe you, you uh, wait for just a second. No, this this should work. And here we have another question. Well, I wish you men could be a bit more innovative. I'm really tired of soccer. It's a fact of life that uh, basically you will have no uh, female speakers involved. And also, uh, I've already done one project with DFKI on soccer, which I fought immensely against the domain as such. As Thierry probably remembered, I wanted cosmetics, much more interesting. Um, but anyway, um, let's try to be a bit more liberal about who is going to participate in, this, in the spoken dialogue systems. We need something that is sort of equal. Are you saying women are not so interested in soccer, uh, which is not the case? Uh, I, I, 
I don't uh, think so. Now, uh, especially in, if you look at the German soccer team, I think the, the women, uh, female team is much better than the male team and so on. No, uh, but, but uh, this, uh, I think it's a prejudice that, that uh, it's, uh, uh, soccer is something only for men. But I think we can exchange the, 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 the domain. I mean, it was uh, more uh, the, the idea, you know, what, what kind of domain could we find, which is a popular uh, domain. And I think it's uh, when you go around Europe and what is discussed, uh, it's mostly uh, sports or politics. Uh, politics, uh, however, is, is too hard, yeah? and of course we can, can go to lo Olympic Games or something. I, I, th I think the, the idea here is that uh, we should not go too much to a scientific domain, because uh, if we have such a dialogue, I think it's much nicer if it's really coupled to, to event where you can show the system, like Hans also did with Expo, where you really have a, a big event where you really uh, the, the European Commission can show what the technology brings, and it's only, of course, an uh, example. We don't want to sell the system uh, uh, somewhere, uh, but it's uh, the technology. The technology should be, uh, of course, uh, be useful for many domains, and I was thinking about event, but if you have a better event, I <laughs> I know, it's, I know it's unfair because I have two microphones, but let me comment on that. I go to Hanover Fair for quite some years and I follow the RoboCup, the championships there. And it's RoboCup soccer. And it is a dream contest. There are so many girls and it's very intense. They, they, everybody has a lot of fun and they work um, many, many hours to be part of that. And I understand what you say, but I really honestly believe soccer is... And I'm not so much a fan, really, I'm not. But soccer really is in the main heart of the people and it, will be, it, could be, um, it could be an instrument, it could be an event that gives us the funding, the intensity and the emotion uh, to, to make really uh, speech and language technology much better. Have you been, have you been, did you see the RoboCup championships? The RoboCup soccer and, and, and all what they do? It is, it is a very, very intense uh, championship. Cricket. <laughs> yeah, then. That is, maybe, maybe cricket would be nice too, but they can't do it. They only can play soccer right now. Okay, I don't want to comment on the soccer problem. The question is, do we have ever problems uh, than that? Uh, on your list of problems to solve, there was w the very first one was the top-down influence uh, yes. down to speech recognition. If I remember right, when we started with the architecture pro uh, project 20 years ago, yep. which later turned into Workmobile, that was high priority to goal number one. So now we are 20 years on. Uh, what makes you optimistic that during the next six years there might be a breakthrough in this issue? Um, I think uh, on the one hand side, uh, speech recognition has now reached uh, a plateau. I mean, they really, people are desperate uh, in uh, uh, going to the next uh, generation. Uh, before, now they, uh, I think in speech recognition, uh, really people squeezed out, uh, you know, uh, the last things from the technology we have right now. I mean, uh, there is no uh, progress uh, in the, I mean, in the original speech recognition task, going from the signal to word letters. Uh, if you go to the conference, people divert and go to other directions, now like diarization, speaker identification, language identification, but the real, because, uh, I mean, there's not, and, and everybody shares, either you go more to neurophysiological uh, models again, and there's uh, groups trying to g get rid of, rid, rid of uh, hidden Markov modeling and so on, but uh, again, they don't get the recognition rates you have now with hit Markov models when you tweak them and uh, on the other hand everybody says okay uh, if you would have uh, uh, more 
knowledge about the context, you could be uh, do a better job. And I think what makes me uh, uh, more optimistic is that now uh, we, ha we, under we have the speed, the, the, uh, the speed of uh, speech recognition and the re reliability so that um, uh, before, when we introduced top-down knowledge, the whole process uh, slowed down uh, too, too much. And because we have now such a high speed, I think uh, it's not an issue to delay it a little bit because some of the speech recognizers are actually f uh, better than real time. I mean, the, you, you, the, you have to slow down the input because the, the recognition is so fast, ultra fast in the process. And therefore, I think it, uh, now it's technically possible to bring in a lot of insights we had already, but uh, people didn't like them <laughs> because then the, the, uh, you know, the whole system would work not in real time. I mm. think this is, is my, my uh, so it's more a technical issue than a re from the research point of view. Yeah. But as you, as you said before, we get so much information for free. All these, all these machines that know where they are and what they want and uh, sort of the, the microphone with the, it's sort of GPS inside. Look at the iPhone. It, the, 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 um, now the system knows who you're talking to and why you're there. It probably it knows where you sleep, how much you paid for the train ticket and, and all this contextual information we never had before. It was much too, far too expensive and that, 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 what, what, yeah, that's what you said in your, uh, in your talk. Uh, we could we, we could really grab in this and, and maybe there is some magic to perform for better language technology. All that is true, but uh, still the question here is how to use this information. That's the crucial point. Yes, but the information before, is there. That's not a problem. Yeah, yeah. but we, uh, before five years, five years, look back five years in time, there, uh, there wasn't this wealth of information. It's the first time right now that we have it, and it and, and there are millions of, of devices that, that that can that can give you this information. It, it's the now. It's another I, time, and we can start again. I agree. It's readily available, but we could simulate the situation already 30 years ago. That was no problem to say, we assume following knowledge about the world. How to use it in speech recognition? That's the open question. Any other, any other questions? So we have... All right, no, okay. okay. <coughs> All right, so if there are no questions for the very moment, thank you again, Professor Walster, for this talk. Thank you very much.